So in this presentation, we're going to cover very briefly importing a 3D object uh, from something like Cinema 4D uh, into your project. Now, I'm going to use Cinema 4D. Um, we'll take a much deeper dive into this. Um, there are some things to be careful of and, and uh, some things to look out for. Um, but we're going to take just a kind of very basic example. Um, I'm going to jump into Cinema 4D and I'm just going to create a standard uh, tube object. Now, uh, this tube I'm going to choose because it has kind of a, a negative space in the shape here. Um, and I'm just going to modify this a little bit. I'm going to change its inner radius maybe to 150 and its outer radius to maybe 300 or maybe I'll keep it at 200. I'm not sure. I'll tinker with it a little bit. Um, now, these might feel like kind of abstract uh, numbers, but remember Unity is using one meter. Uh, and 100 centimeters is one meter. And so we can get a, a reference object inside our scene. I'll create a cube. And this cube by default in Cinema 4D is 200 centimeters. So it's two meters. I'm going to change this to 100 centimeters. So here's the default cube size in Unity. If I jump back into Unity and I create a game object and I create a cube, this one meter cube is the same size as a 100 centimeter cube inside Cinema 4D. So generally when I'm modeling something, I have a basic sense of what the scale is that I'm trying to create. Um, I only need this uh, cube just for reference and I can get rid of it uh, now. And this is, uh, for the sake of the demo, I think this, um, this tube's gonna be just fine, okay? Now we can do this with more complex objects. There are some things to keep in mind when we're uh, importing 3D objects. Uh, normally, I would save the Cinema 4D project in its own project folder or as part of the assets for the game project, um, but I want to I save uh, that conversation for um, a different project. Just, uh, just know that normally, for now, until we get the handle of, of our project folder, I'd want to save this in its own separate project folder. Um, once I do all the modeling and create everything that I want and I want to bring this thing into uh, Unity, the first thing is make sure that I save the Cinema 4D project uh, in the same way and conventions that we've covered in, in previous uh, 3D design courses. And then what we'll do is we'll choose to export. So I'm going to choose File, Export. And in order to get this model into a format that Unity uh, will like, we'll, we'll use this FBX format. Now this is a fairly universal uh, format. So I'll choose File, Export, FBX. And for the sake of the demo, I'm gonna save this right to the desktop. And I'll just simply call this, uh, this is my um, tube. And, and I'll include project um, because I wanna point out that I'm exporting the entire project and there's actually a tube object in here. So I'm saving a tube project.fbx. I'm saving it right to the desktop for now. Um, again, just for the sake of the demo, I'm gonna let this export settings window default uh, because everything should work just fine. We'll take a deeper dive into this window uh, at a later time and I'll hit okay. So now if I jump out to my desktop, you'll notice that we have a tube underscore project FBX on the desktop. I'm going to jump back into Unity. Now, I'm, I've kind of strategically placed Unity, uh, the window, with a little bit of overlap here just because of uh, I'll share a couple of different methods for importing this, uh, this model. I'm going to go to my Assets folder. I'm going to right-click and choose to create a new folder, and I'll call this Models or 3D models or you know level parts or whatever makes sense. I'll double click and I'll go inside that folder and I'll just click and drag and drop directly into the Unity interface. Okay, so that's about the easiest way to import this. When we do, you'll see that we get a tube project. Uh, we also, it generates a materials folder. So in the event that we have materials, I didn't create any materials for this. Um, but they would have been exported as well. There are some things to keep in mind when it comes to materials uh, from other 3D uh, uh, modeling environments, and we'll cover some of those a bit later. Um, alternatively, what we can do, um, we could uh, choose to import a new asset. This is an asset that we can use for our project. 
Uh, so I could right click and choose to import and I would go to my desktop and you can see that this file is listed and I can import and that would give me about the same results. Um, alternatively, I could also go to assets. In fact, let me go to the root of my assets folder to demonstrate this. I'll go to assets, import new asset, navigate to the location of my FBX and I'll import. Um, this gives me the import uh, in the folder that I was looking at. So I get a, um, I get a materials folder. Okay, I already had a materials folder, so it didn't overwrite that. Um, but I end up with the two project. Now this is redundant, so I'm gonna delete this in a moment. Um, but you know, the best bet is to either drag it directly into your project folder or the, the subfolder, or make sure that you're inside the subfolder, okay? So I'm just gonna select this object, just like deleting an object from the scene. I'm gonna command delete or right click or control delete and I'll use the version that I imported into my models project. Now, you'll notice that when I drag this out, let me get rid of my reference cube here, command delete. Um, when I drag this object out, I'm just dragging it into the scene and dropping it and we have our basic tube object. When I hit the play button, uh, we'll, we'll notice something here um, that we don't have any colliders on our object. Our, our sphere just kind of rolls right through it. Now, uh, for the sake of the demo, I think it's going to be a little bit easier to test this if the ball's not bouncing around. Um, so I'll make a, a few quick adjustments so that I can debug this or, or test my environment a little bit more efficiently. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my, my ball object and I'm either going to remove the bounce ball physic material or I'm gonna go into my material folder and take the bounce ball physic material and reduce its bounciness, okay? Either one of those will work. I'm gonna reduce the bounciness of the material. Okay, so the result is that when I con command or control P to run this, the ball's not bouncing all over the place. The other thing is that I don't wanna wait for this sphere, this ball or whatever object I'm trying to test to kind of fall through this complex scenario just to get here. So maybe I'll just line it up over this bottom ramp temporarily um, so I don't have to wait as long for it to get to the area that I want to test, okay? Or I could even just kind of drop it, you know, right into the scene. But I do want some forward motion to test this. And I'm just going to move this over a little bit. But you can see that, that the punchline is that we don't have any colliders here, okay? Now there's two ways that we can add an appropriate collider to this object. Um, the first is on import. So when we dragged this asset in and, and dropped it into our destination, uh, that gave us this file. And if we highlight this file in the assets folder, you'll notice that in the inspector, we have some import settings. We have animations, we have rig, and we have model. Now what we're interested in is focusing on the model. Uh, and with the model tab, if we look through all of these options, you'll notice that there's a generate colliders. And if I check generate colliders, um, what will happen when I hit the apply button, we have to hit the apply button, is that it calculates the geometry of this object and applies a collider that's the same shape as the object. Okay, now if I hit the play button, uh, you'll see that we get this result of we're landing on the surface. Now, um, this object that we dragged into the scene is a prefab object or it's a it's a reference object okay in this object is referencing this file that we've imported so we have an instance of this file so any change that we make to this file if i select it or this asset if i change any of these properties and hit apply uh, it's going to uh, it's going to update any instance that's been placed in the scene so i'm just going to move this over a little bit so we can see this a little bit more clearly um, you can see that we can fall inside the object. So, you know, there's a lot of things that lend itself to, um, you know, experimenting with some simple 3D shapes. Now, uh, this object, um, we can apply materials uh, to this object just as we normally would. Um, if I select this object inside the scene hierarchy and I go into my materials, um, I could take, let's see, uh, for the sake of the demo, I'll just grab this material. You see I'm trying to assign that material and there's nothing doing. Um, 
It's because it's a prefab object that's referencing this library object, and so we would need to go into uh, our models file and, uh, and, and modify this instance um, and assign a material here at this level. Now, even doing this, if I were to, you can see that I can kind of sneak uh, a material on here. Um, and then once we do that, if we go back into our model, we should see either an update in here or we'll see the update uh, over here. So things get a little bit tricky. Right now, we just apply the material to the instance and we'll talk about the relationship between uh, the object, the reference object, or the instance of the object that's inside the scene. So let me just uh, command Z to undo. I'll back up a little bit until we get that material removed. Um, and we'll talk about the nuance of that later. So again, that's selecting the model in the assets folder. In the inspector, choosing the model tab and making sure that generate colliders is checked. Now, if I uncheck it, I need to hit apply. Uh, when I hit the play button, uh, we should get what we expect, which is that we're not interacting. Alternatively, what we could do uh, is we could select the object that's been placed inside the scene, okay, that does not have colliders applied to it, uh, and we can go to components, physics, and we can choose to manually add colliders to it. We could add just some simple colliders, uh, in the case of a box collider, if I add the box collider, you can see that um, it's highlighting uh, the, the, the bounding box here. It's been applied over top of the geometry. Uh, this is a very simple and efficient collider, but we won't have the benefit of this negative shape, okay, because this is just a simple box collider. I'll go over here and I'll remove this component. With that tube selected, I could go to Components, Physics, and choose a couple of different ones, but if I choose Mesh Collider, um, that will use the mesh of this object. I'll hit the play button, uh, and you'll see that now we get that, that negative space back. So it uses just whatever the geometry is in that model. So uh, this is optional, but I wanted to get this information to you. There will be a time when we're required to you know, take some simple models uh, that we either make or, or uh, that we find and incorporate those into a project, but I wanted to give you that opportunity for this project because it lends itself to it uh, very well. So we'll push forward in the next presentation, uh, talk about a couple of other um, uh, options that we can play with the physics and then we'll make a pass to kind of clean this up uh, and then submit our project. So have fun with it. Stay tuned to the next presentation.